back to another episode of The Depths of the Melody. I had the honor of sitting down with Aaron from Wolves in the Throne Room. And uh, it was awesome. It was a really great conversation. I really believe you're going to enjoy it. And on top of that, Aaron hooked me up with a few copies of their latest EP, Crips of Ancestral Knowledge. And I'm going to be giving those away. So all you have to do is after you watch this interview, just comment down below. And at the end of April, a few people are going to be reached out and they will uh, they'll win this EP. So sit back, get your snacks, and enjoy. Aaron, um, I was super happy that you even agreed to to do this, to message me. You know, sometimes when I send out messages, I don't really expect an answer. And so I was really grateful, man, that you said, yeah, dude, let's do this. And um, I discovered you guys last year by a community member on my YouTube channel. And they said, I I have always been kind of hungry to dive into black metal more and mm -hmm. elements of black metal artists that use those elements, but I've always had a hard time connecting, you know, and um, somebody said, you got to listen to wolves in the throne room. And I was like, okay, we'll do it. So I did a reaction to twin mouth spring. And I re I'll never forget it, man. I'm sitting there and I'm listening to it. And then you, in the beginning, you have like this punch in the face melody right away. And then it goes into this acoustic. Yeah. Acoust and I, dude, I, <laughs> I just, my jaw drops because it was not what I expected, but it was so like, oh my God, man. And like, it was awesome. And so um, there was something like very primal and natural that like leapt out at me when mm. I first heard that song. Mm. And so again, fast forwarding to now you allowing me this opportunity to talk with you was just huge for me. Like it just felt really good. And I, like I said in the beginning, I know a lot of interviews will flow in the vein of like talking about the album, who inspires you like musically, yeah. But I, I feel like based on that reaction I had and the reaction that I have continued to have listening to your music since then, I have been like, dude, I need to like peel. I need to try to peel as long as they're okay, because I, I feel something deeper in this. I don't feel like, I don't feel like you guys are just like, Hey man, let's make cool music. Like you are making cool music, but I feel something deeper with your sound that almost feels like it's touching a, a deep part of me personally. Mm. So that's why this talk means a lot. It, so cool. I, I appreciate it, man. Yeah. I appreciate you saying that that means a lot. And I, I hear what you're saying. Um, And so let's get into it. Peel away. Well, dude, for the sake of anybody who's new, can you just give me a brief history of wolves in the throne room? Sure. Well, I realized a few months ago that we put out our first demo in 2004. And so this is 20 years of Wolves in the Throne Room. Um, and over that time, we've stayed very consistent to the, the spirit, the message, the sound of the music um i think because maybe as you alluded to the music is coming purely from our hearts and it's for me i can just speak for myself it's absolutely necessary for my soul's journey for my psychological well-being to create the music because it's expressing parts of myself and my own journey through life that need to be expressed through art, the alchemy of art, at my peril, to not express these things, to not let the emotion come forth would be would court would be courting death. Um, and so it's been a part of my life all of my adult life. The core of the band has always been me and my brother, Nathan, who plays guitar and does vocals. Um, and 
And in the early years, um, there was a couple other guitar players, um, specifically Rick Dolan, who played on Diadem of 12 Stars and Two Hunters, um, who was really crucial in um, creating the blueprint of how the band sounds. Like some of our most beloved songs were co-written by him. So I always want to give him a lot of honor and respect. Um, but he left the band after Two Hunters. And um, it was basically just me and Nathan for Black Cascade and Celestial Lineage and Thrice Woven as well. And right at the end of Thrice Woven, um, Cody Keyworth, who had been kind of our touring guitar player for many, many years, was fully like welcomed into the brotherhood. Um, and that it'll be that the three of us like going forward, like, uh, like he's the one that in some ways makes it all work because Nathan and I can really get at each other and get on each other's <laughs> nerves as siblings can do. Um, so I'm really grateful that he joined the clan, um, and like brings his own creativity and perspective, um, which is very different because he's a different person, but also all three of us are very much rooted in the same kind of culture. Like we're all coming out of a DIY crust metal uh, punk background, you know, starting as teenagers, um, basically punks who love black metal. Um, and so we have that as our like core, like our essence of who we are, this DIY um, approach to doing things and a certain spirituality, if you want to put it that way, um, and a love for mountains and forests, which is our inspiration, of course, as you hear in the music, and a commitment to never waver from the core of what the band is. Like It's just not really an option for us to do anything other than what is most authentic for us to do as artists. And to, I mean, to wrap it up, we just released an EP, I don't know, six months. I don't keep track of time, really. I'm not good with time, but six months ago, the song with the song you reacted to. Um, and that very much feels like opening up to a new era. Like EPs are weird for bands. It's like, you know, bands do EPs for a reason. And oftentimes it's to kind of clear the palette, um, to open up to the next record. It's like, you know, in the case of this EP, it's like finishing Primordial Arcana, like all of the work that went into that record and all of the things that were happening in our lives during that time, like sealing the gate on that to open up for the next thing. And uh, here we are. It's almost spring. And uh, we feel very inspired and like ready for like the next incarnation, like the next thing that's going to come forth. I started with this latest EP and I went backwards. So oh, cool. I'm I'm down. I was actually driving home from work last night listening to Two Hunters. And oh, I nice. just been I just been soaking everything up. And that's uh that's crazy, man, about just like you and your brother working on those few albums, just you two. Because um I really enjoyed Thrice uh Woven. I really enjoyed that album a lot. And um it's been all, it's been an awesome experience, man. I find myself uh, specifically with your music. I find myself almost. Um, I find my mind is able to calm down for a little bit because you and I both know that the world is pulling at us in every direction. And sometimes music can either add to the peace in your soul or it can make it even more chaotic. And even amongst the, the intensity of your music um there's something there's something where i find myself calming down yeah and before i know it a 13 minute song has gone by and i'm going wait what like <laughs> isn't that weird <laughs> let's no, that, do this again <laughs> yeah that's i mean i've i noticed the same thing that when i listen to one of our songs sometimes i'll listen to a pop song a two-minute pop song and it feels like it lasts forever and not necessarily in a good way but it's true. Like our songs, for whatever reason, whatever we do, time has a different, we experience time differently within it. 
I don't know. It's quite magical. And it's a mystery as to me as to why that is. I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's cool that you experienced that, man, because I know maybe from your perspective, it can almost feel like a vain thing to talk from your music, but like it comes from you, like wolves in the throne room and the songs. This is an expression of a soul that is desperately trying to connect to something deeper in this world. We're not just making music. We are, our soul is reaching out in its creative way to touch, touch something and it's yeah. touching people. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I always really appreciate talking to people like yourself who are like really open to that and want to connect to it on that level rather than just some, like, as you said before, like a surface level, um, and the other other thing I wanted to say is that yes, it's like an expression of the heart and soul, but it's also like craft. It's also like hard fucking work, like in the studio, like figuring out how to do it on like a technical level. Like, like you look at a painting and you see this transcendent thing, but it's like craftsmanship. I was just in uh, uh, Holland visiting my partner there. And uh, we went to the M.C. Escher Museum, and who's an artist I've always really admired. And to see like the technical work he had to do to like create the painting, just like these reams of like incredibly complex sketches and almost mathematical models to create what looks effortless or what looks kind of sublime and transcendent. I love that. I love to like peer behind the curtain and see like the technical work that went into it. And for me, that doesn't diminish the magic at all. It increases it mm -hmm. uh, because I don't see, like, I don't see a difference. Like I don't necessarily see a difference between um, craftsmanship and the sublime nature of the finished product there. It's, you know, it's part of a process um, and that's life. You know, we have all of these dichotomies and all these paradoxes, uh, all of these disparate forces and magnetisms that are always pulling us and pushing us in all these different directions, sometimes tearing us apart. Um, and it's just right down the middle that the truth is, um, the, the stillness that maybe that you alluded, alluded to in our music. And I hear that in all of the music and art that I see that, that I really connect to is that sense of within the, this this complex web of sound or visuals or paint strokes there is this uh thread of a stillness through the middle that goes to the heart i almost am thankful that not a lot of things have come easy for me because i've had to work mm. and like what you said like if i was like one of those prodigies that like i picked up a paintbrush and all of a sudden I painted like this master with no effort no I don't know if I would truly appreciate I don't know you know knowing who I am and my personality I'm kind of glad that like I've had to work my ass off at things that I think I'm okay at you know what I mean and and so yeah I get that man and um I also think too chaos is subjective because when people listen to like music that has elements of black metal or whatever to some people that's just chaos that's but again the chaos of music is so subjective i can listen to something that has no distortion no nothing and i can be like dude this is too heavy like this is too there's something that's not making me settle mm. but then i can listen to something and go oh man i just feel calm i feel peace you know yeah. and i yeah i really yeah that was a good point there was a there was one thing I read where it said your very first practice was you guys like <laughs> practice in this rundown farmhouse and this like overgrown farm. Yeah, dude. The it, I just had this image when I read that. I just was imagining you guys walking through this knee high of grass, going in. Hey man, like we're gonna like write some music. <laughs> And I felt like that image that I, as I read it, was just so, we never know the start of something. We never know the power of beginning. Mm, yeah. 
And I think that image when I read that was like so awesome because I was like, damn, because I, we can look back. Everybody can look back and go, wow, 20 years. Look at that beginning, dude. And look at like where you guys have come and being like, you guys were walking to this abandoned freaking farmhouse to create, to create this. Yeah. Do you still, do you still go to the farm or? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. It's, it's nearby. And um, yeah, in a lot of ways, that piece of land kind of like birthed part of Wolves in the Throne Room. Because one thing I'm very conscious of is that like, yes, we're musicians and we write our guitars and drums and whatnot, but the the muse, if you will, the music is rising up out of the earth and not just the earth, but specific places on the earth like our the places where we live and like connect to and have developed relationships with over the years and that farm is definitely one of those places where like the inspiration like it's like a wellspring you know it's like a fountain of of music and feeling and opportunity for connection another place that's generated a lot of music is this studio which is um more in the woods, it's up against a really beautiful um, cedar forest, like the most beautiful forest around these parts. It's like a really unique and special place. Um, and that's where I spend most of my time now, um, connecting with the trees around here and the streams and um, letting the music flow forth. It's cool. Yeah, we're, we'll be we'll be here for a while, at least the next record which we're just now starting to work on is going to be certainly written and mostly recorded and mixed in here. So um, I'm conscious of myself and my own psychology that I'm starting to look around and feel into, Oh, okay. We're about to like open up a new era of creativity, like in this place. And it's like making a stew or something. It's like getting the ingredients out and like, starting the cooking fire and making sure the firewood is stacked and like beginning to like hold the space and create the magical container um, within which all of that work can be done and uh, setting the intention that it'd be good work <laughs> and incorporate the <laughs> painful lessons of previous journeys and know that it doesn't, it's always going to be different. Um, and both open up to the mystery of what is and also have vision of what you want it to be and, you know, let those two poles dance with each other. I feel like you guys walk this edge that walking to truth of who you are, but also avoiding that, that feeling of easily toppling over into like a self-indulgent dilution dilution mm -hmm. of the modern society and the direction that the masses appear to be going. Yeah. Like, you, I, <laughs> it's almost like there's so many things out here. Everybody's making these big splashes, but nothing, not nothing, but a lot of things are just not authentic. That was a lot, dude. I, my brain, I'm sorry, man. I, um, I feel you, man. And I struggle with that. I just hate to be a fucking boomer, you know, like, <laughs> you know, how old are you? May I ask? 46. Oh, okay. I'm 36. So I'm hell of old. <laughs> no, uh, dude. <laughs> no, I feel I'm in my prime. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. In authentic, in authenticity. I mean, that's like a very much a specter of like this age, right? like in the world of social media and like fucking TikTok and which to my boomer eyes, it looks like the quintessence of surface. Like how can you really get into an artist if you're seeing them on a, this, this is the medium, this is the medium for 30 seconds it's a great mystery to me. Um, but at the same time, I'm not going to spend any effort or any of my chi like judging that or like hating on that. Mm -hmm. um, 
I guess the way I've always approached things, whether it's politically or in terms of, uh, you know, the things that I fucking hate, how to approach that. I've always um, attempted to just focus on the thing that I do love and the thing that I do want, the vision I do have and channel all of my energy towards that. And then the other thing could just wither away. Mm -hmm. The, I mean, I could shit on kids on scrolling on TikTok all day, but does that serve me? Does that serve anyone? Or shall I just create the art that I know is from my heart and put it out there with the best of intentions? Um, and these other things can just disappear, at least from my consciousness. Um, there are times when things that are evil are just thrown into your face. Um, but then we deal with those things when they come. But I'm not going to actively seek it out and actively hate on the youth of today for the way they are creating. And I'm sure, and I know that there are extremely, there's always going to be creative people. There's always going to be true artists who have vision and purpose and are aligned with their heart, with whatever medium they're working within to bring transcendence and increase love in this incarnation, um, to channel and transmute the murky, gritty, spiky, painful stuff that we all encounter. And, you know, it's just grist for the mill. Um, they're out there. And so that's where I try to keep my, keep my mind rather than falling into the, you know, morass of despair about uh, the state of modern culture, which would be very easy to do because I because mm -hmm. <laughs> look at it from one perspective, it looks like shit to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude, it's, uh, I find even as like, as I get older and what everything that I want to do, I have that same feeling that you have of, of artistic expression. Like I feel like in myself, I'm so desperate to, I cannot get to the end of my life and be like, I did nothing. Mm, yeah. I, I, I have like such a feeling of like, I have to do something. I have to throw these pebbles into the pond. And, and I just, it's not so much for like, maybe who it will reach, but more like I have to do this or I'm going to die. Yeah. Like a, like a soul death. Yeah. Like Definitely. what you said. And so, yeah. um, yeah, I relate with that man. And, and, um, everything, everything that I do, cause like one of the big things on, like, even with my channel, I don't, I don't tell people to like subscribe or follow I don't yeah. tell you to like the video, dude. Like my big thing is like, I'm on this journey of discovering new music, but I, I believe in connection. I believe in relationship. And, um, in the, in this day and age, we have all these means to connect with people, but so many people are struggling with depression and loneliness. They feel lost. They feel broken. They feel like no one's there, you know? And if, if I can say something to encourage them, to lift them up, we don't have to believe the same thing, but I can try to, Hey, like you have value, you have meaning, you know, let's maybe find something and try to what you said, spread love in this world. You know what I mean? Through everything we do. Um, yeah, definitely. And metal and metal is so important for that. Um, yeah. Yeah. You, you know, I was, just, I was just editing, um, uh, a music uh, live performance mm -hmm. um, that was filmed at the Fire in the Mountains Festival two years ago. Um, this is a really amazing festival, and it was in Jackson, Jackson, Wyoming. <laughs> and there was a couple of cameras that were in the crowd. And I was like, um, as I was doing the editing, I was like looking at the crowd and like the, it was just really inspiring. People were just so fucking joyful. Like I could just, you know, I, I, there's a camera on me. There's a camera on Nathan and Cody and Galen, and then a wide shot. And then a couple cameras moving in the crowd. And it was such a good experience to, to like, see what we were all like going through and experiencing. Um, 
and seeing how people were like responding to the music, like what we were putting out, how people were taking that into their their body or heart and then having their experience with it and then like transmitting it back to us. And it was this amazing feedback loop. Like that's metal or music at its best. Like when that um, upward spiral of positivity and like transformative alchemic energy can occur. Um, I'm about to put this video out on, we'll put it out in our, um, whatever, our various platforms. And I'm really excited for people to see it because it really captured like, like our band and our audience and the shared community, like at its fucking best. It's really, really hard to like capture that kind of thing on film. Like you're, you know, you, you work in the video medium. You, you probably know that there's like the stars have to like fucking align to like have it all work, like to have the connection, like come through like this mm -hmm. medium. Um, so I'm super stoked to like put this out there. Cause I think people will really appreciate it. You refer, you've said it a few times already today, but like for some people who might not understand, you say like alchemy and you, yeah. you use that. Can you go into like depth about like, <laughs> yeah, how your music and uh, how alchemy and I think at the most fundamental level, alchemy occurs in life when we like encounter life in all of its painful messiness. The heartbreak, the disillusion, the loneliness, the madness that we experience in human life and through a process, an artistic process or through lifting weights or whatever you do, transmuting it, changing it into something that enlivens us and pushes us forward in a good way towards a more true and realized life for our benefit as an individual, but also for the benefit of the entire community. Um, I suppose the polar opposite of alchemy would be just getting lost in despair being consumed by darkness um and there's something about as an artist how you have to kind of like go up against those really scary edges because maybe as artists we're doing a bit of like work for like a, a larger group of people like not everyone is an artist we all do amazing things and we all create but to be an artist is kind of a specific thing and part of that is to like go up against the the bleeding edge of what we can deal with and just like let in like just enough of that poison to be able to work with it, to create. You know, we see these alchemic images all throughout mythology. The one that springs to my mind immediately is Shiva, who swallows the poison. That's why he's blue, so he swallowed poison and he holds it in his throat. Like he doesn't swallow it all the way so it'll kill him and he doesn't vomit it back out onto everyone else, but he just holds it in his throat. And um, turns it into beauty. Um, and so in that way, um, I guess it's like, a, yeah, it's an approach to life, I guess, that when the really difficult stuff comes to like be like, all right, you know, grist for the mill, like fuel for the fire, like put it into the 
the alchemic vessel and like fucking crank the heat up the crucible yeah crucible sure and then like wisdom needs to be it needs to be done wisely as well you don't want to drink too much of the poison because you'll die or go mad which i've almost done a couple times um and you don't want to crank the heat too high because it'll boil over and make a mess maybe harm someone else um and so you know like all these things it's just finding that balance in that sweet spot the ego mind wants us to push too hard sometimes that's one of my fatal flaws is like i'll just crank up the heat too much um and as i get older and maybe perhaps a bit wiser if it, it feels easier to like let's turn that down let's let that simmer let's let that unpack itself a little bit that's like comb it out like it doesn't need to be this fiery nuclear explosion all the time this can be done in a more gentle way i don't have any regrets about having lived life up to this point in the way that i have and like you know there was a lot of art that was created through that process um but you know i think part of life is like just stepping in the same goddamn hole like again and again you're just walking along you fall in a hole you get out you forget about it walk down the same path fall in the hole this goes on and on and on and on and eventually ideally you can say oh there's a hole there i'm going to go around that hole i don't have to go in that hole again there might be another hole but at least we're not you know <laughs> continuing to be a fool stepping in the same hole again and again Dude, you you said something about um being covered up in like that feeling of dread and everything. And I told you earlier, I, I'm a very like optimistic, positive person. And um I am too. Very and much. And so these past couple years, um, I hope you're okay with me like talking about this. I probably won't include this, but I feel prompted to based on what you said. Um these past couple years. I don't like to say the word abandoning faith, mm. but I was like, like I said, very devout. And, um, and that came from a place of intimate longing. And as I started to see the flaws in the foundation, in the, the mythos, and for me to call it a mythology is a big deal because mm. it was my life. Yeah. And so to start to see like, this is a mythology, this is right. Um, I had an evening one night, you know, I'm 36 years old. This has been my life. I was sitting on the couch and um, I was trying to do some work. I was trying to work on some videos and I couldn't. And my, my mind, my brain was like, no, 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 you're done, Tommy, you're done. And I had to go sit on the couch, man. And I had such a weight of dread come over me that I've never felt in my whole life. My whole life, when I have faced difficult things, I could always see the light at the end of the tunnel yeah. because I was taught, well, there's, you know, God, or there's this, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And for the first time, I didn't see a light at the end of the tunnel. And I got like washed over with this insane feeling of dread. Yeah, It, it, it was crazy, man. I never felt anything like that. And I remember... I was like, you know, what if, what if there's nothing after this, right? And I, it's a thought I never thought of, right? It's, well, no, that's not true, no. And all of a sudden I'm like, and I, I remember um, I started to like freak out a little bit, like kind of allow myself to slip into um, what's the point? What's uh -huh. the point of everything, right? And um I could feel like myself say to me, Tommy, you're tired and you need to go to bed. Just fucking go to sleep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> go, go, go to sleep and um, you'll be all right tomorrow. I, I could feel I, I had to say that I had to muster that up to calm this cyclone that was starting to form in my mind. Right. Yeah. And uh, it was funny, man. I went to bed and I woke up and I was like, I thought about the night before and I was like, I don't know. I don't have answers. I don't know, but somehow I know I'll get through this. Like somehow 
I'll figure something out. You know what I mean? But yeah. it was wild, man. I never felt such a feeling of like hopelessness ever in my life. I don't know. When you said something and I, I thought about that moment and I was like, I feel like you would. I just wanted to share that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those, I guess the, the way that um, I've approached those times when things are extremely dark is to like not be so like self-centered and like realize oh this is just how humans feel sometimes like i'm not alone in this everyone goes through this to a certain degree and every great artist has made like transcendent art out of that and um like that dark night of the soul that you touched there. I mean, that's like the beauty of like being a human in some ways is that we're not alone. Like there are all the other ones here and the ones who have gone before our ancestors and uh, the people in our lives, like elders we have in our lives that have <laughs> like been exactly where you were and have like found and have found a way through. Like these are like the pathfinders. Um, at the same time, like, of course, like people can get, people can and do get trapped in that dark space, but there's, there's definitely a way out. Like, it's a fact. It's like a fucking fact. Like, yeah. we don't know about what happens after we die or whatever. No one knows. What we do know, we can just look around demonstrably. Like, we can get out of like the darkest mind spaces like we can pass through the most hellish like spiritual experiences we can pass through the most hellish like physical experiences um it's just been done time and time again billions of times by billions of people like the proofs in the pudding and again that's the role of art like art like it's like just showing you that again and again like i was in hell and i made this art and now i'm not in hell anymore and the art is like a, a hand that can like, is reaching out to you to like help you out of that place and not even help you into a place of like, oh, now everything's, now everything's fine. <laughs> yes, my faith is restored. I'll go to heaven and everything's fine. Eh, maybe it's more just like, I'm more, I'm, I can be okay swimming in this vast expanse of not knowing and uh, just be in this balancing place. And not need to grasp on to like, yes, I know what will happen after I die. I know what this all means. I know what the purpose of life is. But just be comfortable just right here, you know? Mm -hmm. Right here in the present. What what does Wolves in the Throne Room mean? What's the what's the band? What's the um just fucking ripping the throat out of the tyrant you know i might sound like a hippie right now but like we're also like just fucking anarchists and um i love it man i hate authority <laughs> i have a hard time with cops like i just like bristle with i'm rebellious like, i'm very yeah, I'm rebellious. rebellious we're all rebellious and um like just don't want to like roll over for unjust authority you know, and like, and if, you know, that name came to us when we were in our early 20s. And it feels like even like more true now, like I'm more hardcore. Now. You guys walk to a beat of your own drum. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's very, uh, I think that's why a lot of people are drawn to you and drawn to your music, because there is you're like I said before, you guys aren't just making cool music. When you dig behind and and you know speak and connect with Nathan and you Cody, man, these fucking guys are the real deal. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and also we're just like dudes, you know. Yeah, but you know it's like easy to like mythologize people. Like we're just straight up human beings, flawed human beings, just as much as anyone else. I read something that you guys said um, 
and you correct me, obviously, you said uh, our relationship with the natural world is a healing force in our lives. If you listen to black metal, but you don't know what the phase um. the moon is in or what <laughs> wildflowers are blooming, then you have failed. The music is about wildflowers, unfettered rivers, nature, furious and vengeful. I'd like to recant part of that. The part about like, if you don't do it this way, then you failed. Mm -hmm. Like I probably wrote that 15, 20 years ago. And that's a part of me that has softened. Like the part of me, the part of my ego that is like, this is the way I do it. So this is the way you have to do it. I just, I don't have that anymore. Like that's a, that's a really immature attitude. That's that rebellious nature in that young man. Yeah. Rebellious mm -hmm. and arrogant. Mm -hmm. Rebellious and like the arrogance that can only come with youth of like, I've got this shit figured out. And of course, as you know, as you get older, you realize I do not have anything figured out. I know way, way less now. <laughs> I realize now I've never known anything and now I realize I don't know anything and I never would. And just, you know, being at peace with that. Mm -hmm. But I do think that one would benefit from noticing which wildflowers are blooming and when. Um, I certainly have, my whole life is animated by the inspiration that comes from nature. That's just my, that's my personal trip, you know, like I don't want to have anyone experience our music in any particular way. Like we create it, we put it out there and it's a, a gift to be shared. And if someone wants to partake of it and bring it into their own heart and let their own alchemy occur in a good way, I I'm so honored that that occurs. And I feel, you know, talk about cringy. It's like cringe worthy to say, you have to listen to my record in this way. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's the kind of attitude that you just can't hold on to as you go through life. And if you do, you become a rigid asshole. Yeah. I read that man. And I was like, Oh shit, dude. Like I'm going to sit down and talk with this dude. Oh my God. Like, but it blew my mind. Like there was a, there was a feeling of like, uh, damn, what a statement. Right. Yeah. But I, I, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because now that I'm like thinking about it, I'm like, actually it is kind of cool, you know, because it's, a, it's important to take a stand, you know? And even if we're wrong, like, even if like we realize after the fact, Oh, you know, I see it differently now. Like there's such a value in like, like making a heartfelt statement and not being afraid to put that out there artistically, um, and just like stir it up, you know, crank the heat up on the vessel, just let it cook. You guys have been doing this for a long time. What is the strangest perception that people might have had of you guys that have of you guys? Oh, that we like live in a cave. Like, you don't in the... <laughs> i mean kind of but not really especially in the early days like in the early days of the internet you know there was just so much more mystery about about bands and who like who they are mm -hmm. and i know for myself when i when i heard like emperor and burzum and these you know seminal black metal artists I had like an image in my mind of like wizards in a cave. And that was like very dear to my heart. Um, and I know that people have created those same sort of images about us. Um, and I think part of it's true to a certain degree. You don't live in a cave per se, but like absolutely do live in the woods and like nothing about this music is a put on or an artifice. It's like very authentic and true. But, um, you know, people can take it, take that imaginative image a bit too far to like the realm of like parody. Dude, yeah. And the internet's brutal for that, man. They they take one little thing and they can like just blow it up. You, uh, there was also something that was said that has actually been 
pretty helpful with me with the understanding of of the music and the genre in general when it comes to black metal where you said you guys take the elements of black metal that apply to your heart and to your music and you let everything else burn away at the shaft and that was i think that helps a listener and i think that helps somebody when they come in to this style of music they can it's okay if you feel a little like what the flip you know like experience it yeah and then take a minute maybe come back i just thought that uh, that was like really cool man i i don't see too many people sharing their personal feelings about this genre quite like that that was like a new experience for me reading that and i thought that was really cool man um all right man so i always end everything with like i have like a closing question and uh you've you've been really great with expressing and explaining a lot and uh dude this was awesome man um i'm i will uh like really treasure this uh, this conversation thanks um so let's imagine you guys are fast we're fast forwarding i know that time is whatever but imagine wolves is retired you guys are okay. settled down on the mountainside, but people know who you are. What's one thing that you're hoping people would come up and say to you with how your music has affected them? What's one thing you do hope to hear? Oh. <sighs> well, the thing is, I don't need to hear it from anyone, but I hope that people have the experience of the music helping them through difficult times. Um, if someone is in a place of deep despair or depression or instability, that the music in some way was grounding, mm -hmm. healing, or opened up a perspective of positivity and like the, the vision that like, even in this dark space, like love is, love is here. Like love is not going anywhere. Yeah. This universe is made from love, fundamentally. And if our music can, like, help express that, like, that's my, that's my soul's desire. But I don't need to hear it from anyone. Like, I don't need to hear anything from anyone because, like, the music is my, just, it's my process. Like, it's just me going through my fucking thing. Um, but I guide it, you know, like I want it to have a good outcome. I want it to have a positive impact on the world. Yeah. Well, you, well, you are, man, and you're going to hear it from me. So <laughs> guys, thank you so much for being with me on this journey. I never thought that we would be sitting down and interviewing bands and artists and just having just great in-depth conversations. And um, I just want to thank everybody who has encouraged and supported me in this channel and what I'm trying to do. I can't do this on my own. And I'm just super grateful for all of you. Thank you so much for taking time to be a part of this community and for taking time out of your day to check out this interview. I hope that you know that you are incredible and you are more than you realize so keep your head up and as always stay lovely stay metal and until next time we'll be back with another episode